And we're back. I'll start our Returnal with our podcast episode 14. Uh, myself, Mermaider, uh, along with Hell22, and we have Chester here with us today. Our guest, he hasn't been here in a couple weeks. Yep. He, he gave up inserting things into his rectum to be here. It's true. I had to take time out. How, uh, how's everything, Chester? Everything's fine. Good. I just want to uh, announce that I just got my, my new Android cell phone. Just thought everyone should know that I'm very excited. Just got it yesterday. Still trying to figure things out. But I have finally joined the rest of the world. Yep, that's right. I still have. So now you can actually do stuff on yep. your phone instead of just, you know... It's fucking great. Tooling around on your little Blackberry. So we had a couple of reviews last week. Uh, Hell 22. Uh, some new ones that you did. Yeah, I took care of the new artists this week. Uh, Mermaider took care of the classics. Uh, first and foremost, we have uh, Howling Void. They're a, a doom band from San Antonio, Texas. Uh, that... There isn't much to say other than this is straight traditional doom. Uh, the downfall of the album is the length of the tracks. I mean, the stuff gets kind of repetitive, so when you're in that doom style and it's it's very slow, very deliberate, I mean, the guitar work is good, the drum work is good, but they very easily could have kept the songs to seven minutes instead of 15, and it would have been just as powerful. I mean, there's only sparse vocals throughout the whole thing, so it you know really could have stood, you know, stand to be uh, cut down a bit. But definitely one to check out. I, I'm hoping to hear some more from them in the future. Um, then we had Echo Terra, which is a... I would consider them an operatic symphonic metal band. Yes, sounds uh, right. Along, along the, the veins of Nightwish. I, I, I don't think I'd really put them completely in the same category, but uh, they're from Minnesota. And I, I said in the review that you know it's, it's funny how changing one piece of a puzzle makes such a big difference. They replaced their original vocalist uh, with a, a woman named Melissa, who I really think just kind of ties everything together. You know, her voice is, is strong. She really hits all the operatic parts, but she, you know, has some range in there, too. Uh, but the highlight of the whole thing, as I was telling Mermaider earlier, is the keyboards. This, this guy is absolutely insane on the keyboard. Um, the guitars are almost non-existent when you think about the, the scale of the whole thing. I mean, there's keyboard solo after keyboard solo, mm. and... That in that way it reminds me of Nightwish because you know Nightwish is a very keyboard centric musical band. You know, definitely check this album out. The album actually doesn't come out until October. Uh, it is called Land of the Midnight Sun, but check out their MySpace. They've got a couple tracks on there uh, with Melissa on vocals. Definitely check that one out. And then uh, there's not much to say about the the last review I did this week. Uh, it's Alcest again, and this is very quickly becoming one of our favorite bands. Oh yeah. Uh, I actually took the time to go back. And they just re-released uh, their original EP called Le Secret. Uh, they completely re-recorded the two songs on it. So it's not just remastered. They actually went back and completely redid the whole thing. And when I say they, I mean him. Right. He went back and redid it all. Yeah. Uh, cleaned it all up. The songs are not exactly the same. He you know, added stuff in, took stuff out. Uh, but it's incredible. It's clean. It's like porcupine tree at times, but then straight black metal at other times. And... I have nothing bad to say about it. It was absolutely amazing. Yeah, that's what I love about them, how they're just all over the place. And they go back and forth, and you barely notice when you're listening that the different genres that they you know, throw out. Um, yeah, it's good stuff. I, I really got lost. I, the tracks are around 13 to 14 minutes each, and honestly, the time just flies by. I hit play, and I felt like by the time I blinked, the first track was over, even though I know I listened to the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I had to go back and listen to it two or three times in a row just to take it all in. Yeah. So definitely check them out. We're actually going to go see them in September. Yeah. Uh, looking forward to that very much. You know, okay. We've been we've been we've preaching been the gospel to, to everybody about, yeah. about this band. So definitely check out Al Sest and uh, their original EP, Lay Secret. Chester, you should check them out. Yeah, definitely check yeah, them out. We, we've yeah. been, like I said... I mean, they definitely like you it. said they run along the veins of Nightwish, right? No, no. Different bands. Oh, different bands. Yeah, <laughs> different bands. Sorry. Um, but definitely, we've, we've got a lot of people <laughs> excited about this. And, you know, anyone who's, who's a fan of post-rock, post-metal, yeah. progressive metal, progressive rock, I mean, there's so much in there, yeah. definitely. And Mermaid, you found them because of the, the black metal. Black metal, yeah. Yep. So, That's how I came across them. So definitely... I, like I said, I have nothing but good things to say about this this French band. Um, so I know Mermaider is uh, practically shitting his pants over there because this week we were treated to a new song from the new Mastodon album, The Hunter. Uh, oh, Mermaider, man. you got something to say about that? Oh man, it is everything and more that you could ever hope for from Mastodon. I was I was nervous, you know, 
them working on a new album, how they're going to outdo their, their previous album, Crack the Sky. Such a good album, and I had no idea where they were going to take this. Uh, there was a lot of rumors going around of what the album sounded like, and you, you know, you really just didn't know what was coming. And now that they have their first single out, um, it's actually not the first single. It's just oh, the song they put out that they just released. I don't remember what the first single is. It's one of the songs with the really stupid names. Uh huh. Oh yeah. Um, but this was just kind of a treat. Oh okay. What's the name of the song? Black Tongue. Black Tongue. Yeah. Got some interesting stuff in there. The verses are very like progressive. Yeah. And, but the the breakdown is they, great. They they lean back towards some of their older. Uh, the vocals are a little more like um, a mixture of Leviathan and uh, Blood Mountain. Well, Troy handles a lot of the vocals on there, right. which is, I mean, I'm a big fan of his vocals, so yeah. I think that's cool. Yeah. Um, and it still has that, like, trippiness to it, you know, a little, uh, it's it's out there, but it's uh, yeah. it's it's good. I um, I can't wait for the rest of it. You can check it out, actually. There's We have it streaming on the site. You'll find it, you know, below this podcast to, uh, to listen to, along with New Old Path. Yeah. The, the Devil's Orchard, that's another, again... First song off of their new album titled Heritage, which will be out uh, in this crazy set of weeks. Yep. Now, you know, all of the articles are coming out, and uh, Michael Ackerfeld did an interview in Decibel, and uh, essentially there is no no growling, no screaming on this new Opeth album. Not one, not at all. Mm-hmm. It's it's clean singing. Almost like damnation from it. Sounds. Yep, everything that, that, that I've read in these interviews basically says it, it takes where Watershed left off and puts it head first into Damnation. Oh, okay. Which is, I mean, I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the Devil's Orchard is a great song. A lot of, you were commenting on kind of like the psychedelic bass work, mm-hmm. uh, which is pretty incredible. Uh, I was going to say, it's a, it's a little heavier than Damnation, uh, yep. instrumental-wise. But um, the vocals were, were all clean. They were good, though. I liked them. Yep. It's, it's, I'm looking forward to that album. Obviously, that and Mastodon going to be Album of the Year contenders, we hope. Yeah. But that, you know, the crazy set of weeks, we got uh, Dream Theater on September 13th, mm-hmm. Opeth on the 20th, yeah. Mastodon on the 27th, and then it's either the following week or the week after that is Ice Earth. Yeah, sir, yeah. Um, we got so much coming. Ghost Brigade is in a couple weeks. That's right. Basically, the span of six to eight weeks, there's a huge release every week. Mm-hmm. And that is, that's great. Yep. It's going to be awesome. No shortage of stuff for us to review and talk about. I don't, I don't know how I'm going to find time to keep... Uh, <laughs> listening to other things when I'm these next couple those next couple of weeks I'm just going to be listening to each of those albums that, well what would be great out. it would be great if uh, everyone listening clicked on our ads on the side of the page and then we could quit our jobs oh, and yeah, just yeah. do this all the time and then we could like just sit in the office here and uh, just listen to albums and just okay. give each other the thumbs up through our, our headphones yeah yeah help us out guys yeah. <laughs> get some links we, we appreciate we have uh, one rabid fan uh, named Fenny who clicks our links and she gets us paid yep and we appreciate that and you know she probably got car insurance or something through there so <clears throat> thank you Fanny yeah so definitely uh, click the links now Mermaid the topic today is something very dear to your heart very dear to your metal roots yeah the way you started what are we going to talk about here let's uh let's get into power metal the oh, genre power metal the genre of power metal it's changed so much and it I guess we can start off with the uh, the early 80s, the hair metal bands, the vocals are kind of like how they are now, how they were back then, uh, higher clean singing. Mm-hmm. Some of the almost operatic, some of these guys that can really hit uh, yeah. some high notes, but even going to like Iron Maiden and uh, Judas Priest, Judas Priest yeah. yep. those guys kind of really solidified the genre. Yep. They made it a, a viable metal genre, whereas before like the hair bands definitely had kind of the, the starts of power metal, but... You know, oh, yeah, they, they weren't quite there. And nobody really took them seriously. You know, they all wore women's makeup and uh, yeah, yeah. leather pants and stuff. But 